Okay, so on the latest video, we were talking about the slots folder, and now we have the T poses one. Uh, so T poses will also require its own uh, video to explain. But what I can uh, give you an overview is that this is how we handle the integration between the Yuma avatars and the Mechanim avatar themselves. Uh, because we need to translate uh, those changes from the body shapes between the avatars directly to mechanism avatar uh, structure, bone structure. Okay, so here in Numa generated, let me just show you the serialized scene example. This will make things more clear. We have uh, five avatars. Every time you hit play, the same avatars are created. This is possible because those avatars had been saved as assets that you can see here on the characters folder. Um, those are the those assets are actually load, loaded uh, into the scene. And here we have those uh, two scripts on the DNA helpers. Well, basically, uh, those scripts are automatically generated. You shouldn't change those, as you can see here. And uh, each uh, DNA, humanoid or any other we create later, uh, will also have its own helper to facilitate the process of serialization. And all here we have the super important uh, the manual. Uh, it's a PDF file. I, as I've already said, I highly recommend this, uh, reading this one. This is still not uh, updated with the latest changes. We had many changes on the week before the release, and I'm still working to get those updated. As you can see, there's a lot of information how to create content, the base meshes, Atlas generation, about uh, information about the topology of the content and uh, uh, how the skinning data is projected. So being this um, one year project, I highly recommend reading the manual and fully understanding how everything works. So uh, we have also the DLL folder. This is where the core uh, scripts of Yuma are uh, kept. If you want to have full access of the source code that is provided on those DLLs, this is where you should look. We have this uh, clear separation of what is the core uh, functionality of Yuma and what is basically example code as the scripts we uh, provide on the example folder. So here we have the, the core scripts. They are available on the GitHub but they shouldn't be changed if you're not willing to change Yuma core, uh, core functionalities. So here we have the texture merge material. You shouldn't change the shader for this one. Uh, let me show you here in the layers. The last layer we use for the Atlas generation. So this material, texture merge, is uh, used as reference for the Atlas creation. Uh, while the game is running, you can see here that the main camera is not rendering the Atlas layer. So uh, even this uh, being visible on the scene itself, it's not visible for the player on the game uh, window. So this is the, the simple material we use for the Atlas generation. So those uh, templates on Mechanin templates, let me show you the models, uh, model files themselves. The, this is going to help. So here when we set the rig for the Mechanin uh, itself, so we can have a easy uh, setup for which one is the head, the spine and so on. So here we have both the, the unified and the separated meshes for both male and female avatars. So the separated mesh has uh, each uh, body part separated. You can see here uh, the seams between those parts. 
Uh, those seams are actually removed and handled by uh, scripts I've created. I will be able to explain later how these scripts can help other uh, projects. This is useful not only for the body mesh but for uh, other, uh, other meshes that you don't want to have those seams visible. Here we have the prefabs, uh, basically the human generator prefab and uh, the prefabs that I use for creating the atlas. And here we have the scripts folder. So this folder uh, provides scripts that wouldn't fit inside the DLL folder itself. And some of those scripts require uh, information that is only available when the script is actually compiling. So uh, they wouldn't be uh, included on the DLL. So here we have the shaders folder. Uh, you, if you plan uh, writing your own shaders for Yuma, this is the right place to go. There are some slight changes uh, when you're using uh, shaders specifically for Yuma, but uh, there is not much difference. Uh, you should take a look here. And we also have the Johan shaders. Uh, there are some, also some debugging shaders as well. Okay, uh, just to finish this video, let me just change the material sample to the regular shader. This one was created by Johan, based on the Shadow Gun shader. So, uh, the regular shader is especially good for rendering skin. Uh, it has an interesting fake uh, subsurface scattering, and it also provides an interesting way to calculate the specular color, based on GFuse color. And well, uh, I think that's it for this video. Uh, this basically gives you guys an overview of uh, Yuma folders and the Yuma project itself. So I will keep an eye both on the forum threads and the emails I receive. Uh, if you would like me to record a specific video tutorial, let me know. I'm recording those videos on my free time, so I won't be able to provide many of them in a single week. But I really, I'm really working hard to get all this information for you and help you understand how Yuma works and how you can create content and uh, integrate this to your own projects. So that's it for now. Uh, hopefully I will be able to provide new videos in the following days. See you guys. Goodbye.